Hi everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for assignmentsystamp.com. Today I'm going to be using the Be a Mermaid stamp set and dies and the mermaid scale stencil to create a card. I'm also going to be exploring three different types of embossing powder. I'm first starting with this stencil. I'm using some purple tape from ThermoWeb to tape my cardstock to the stencil. I'm taping it from the back so that I can have the pattern stretch all the way from edge to edge without any interruptions that tape on the front might cause. I'm also taping this entire piece to some paper just so it doesn't move around too much. Taking some Versamark ink, which is an embossing ink, it's very sticky, it takes a long time to dry, and I'm using a mini round blending tool to transfer the ink onto the surface of my card design. And I'm doing it this way instead of pressing the ink pad directly down, because I want it to sort of fade off near the top. Peeled up that stencil, and now I'm going to be using two different colors of Distress Embossing Glaze. I've got the colors Broken China and Cracked Pistachio. Starting with Cracked Pistachio, and I'm going to have this kind of near the middle and to the top of the embossed area on my card. And then I'm going to be sprinkling on some of that Broken China color. I wanted two different colors here, so it has a little bit of an ocean flavor, a little bit almost like the scales are iridescent in the light, something like that. And I used a coffee filter just to catch any uh, sprinkled on embossing powder that fell off my project. Then I can use that to go right back in the jar. For this second color, I did not uh, funnel the leftover embossing powder back into the jar because just by already having that cracked pistachio on the project and then kind of tapping off the excess, it will mix the two colors together. So I did have to sacrifice a little bit of that broken china embossing powder. I hit that with my heat tool until it was all the way melted. I'm left with this really fun background. Uh, Distress gl embossing glaze powders are a translucent powder. So you can actually put other colors or things underneath. I didn't do that for today. I just wanted these two colors to stay together. So now I'm using some Canson Bristol paper and I'm going to be stamping one of the mermaid tails from the stamp set. I'm using some Versafine Onyx Black ink, which is a waterproof ink. I'm going to be doing some watercolor marker, um, watercoloring on top. So I needed to use an ink that wouldn't uh, bleed or smear or smudge while I add moisture on top. I taped down my stamped piece to a word, uh, hard surface. This is a hard board. And then I'm going to be using uh, four, but eventually five colors of the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I've got violet, purple, deep blue, which I'll change to peacock blue, and turquoise green. So I'm going to speed up while I'm painting here so you can see the entire process. But basically, I'm adding a little bit of color directly from the marker onto this uh, image and then I bring in a wet paintbrush and spread out that color. I find that these watercolor markers work best on Bristol paper. Whenever I've tried them on watercolor paper it's sometimes hard to get the colors to move freely but Bristol paper makes it super easy. You notice that that blue shade, the deep blue, was really dry. I ended up bringing in some peacock blue just to get that color moving. And I worked in layers. I dried um, these different areas in between adding more colors on top. I did that for a couple of reasons. I like the look of the colors kind of layered it in, and they deepen with, the, with it each layer. But also when you dry it between the layers, it really helps the paper from starting to pill up and almost like it can't handle all the moisture. As long as you dry them in between, it can actually handle many layers of color. So after I had my entire mermaid tail painted, hit that with my heat tool until it was dry. And now I'm going to add a second type of embossing powder on top. So I'm using that same method I used before with a mini round blending tool. I'm just transferring that Versamark ink directly on top of this mermaid tail. I'm going to be using an embossing glitter from Brutus Monroe. This is Rainbow Sparkle and it's sort of like a clear embossing powder that has glitter mixed in with it. This is an iridescent kind of little bit of a holographic glitter and I thought it would look just beautiful over top of this mermaid tail, give it a very magical ethereal look. 
So I sprinkled that on, tapped off the excess, and then hit that with my heat tool. The thing I love about this embossing pattern in particular, or just clear embossing patterns, is you can really see when it's melted, and it also intensifies and saturates the color underneath. I like that it kind of brings back the vibrancy that this watercolor had when it was wet. You can see that beautiful sparkle that comes with that. You get the sparkle from the glitter and then also the shine from the embossing powder. I used the coordinating dies to cut out this mermaid tail. Just ran that through my Gemini Junior die cutting machine and I'm left with a perfectly cut out tail piece. I'm now going to trim down my background piece here so that it's just a little bit smaller. I ended up with a finished size of three and three quarters by five inches tall. Put some foam adhesive on the back of that embossed piece and then I put it on a white folded card base. This card base is made out of some Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound cardstock. That's the same type of cardstock I use for my background. I now have some pitch black cardstock from Hero Arts. Just prepping that area with an anti-static powder tool. And then I'm going to be stamping a greeting from the stamp set so that I can have a white greeting on top. I'm stamping it in that same Versamark ink. So it's gonna be great for embossing. And then I sprinkled on some alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. This is a nice stark white embossing powder. It looks really great. So I'll hit that with my heat tool and then I have my third type of embossing powder. Trim that down to make a little banner shape and then position that on the front of my card. I put it foam adhesive on the back of the mermaid tail and I did it very strategically so that that area where the black greeting is would not have any foam tape. So that's just going to sort of um, straddle the black greeting strip and just nestle right in there and be adhered to the front of the card. So the last thing I'm going to do, well, I've got two more things I'm going to do. The first thing is I'm going to be adding some sequins to this card front. This is a um, sequin mix that just came out with the latest Simon Says Stamp release. It's got really beautiful colors in it, perfect for mermaids and kind of seascapes. So I did those and then I also added some five millimeter and eight millimeter uh, sequins from Derice. This is the crystal color. I used some tweezers and Gina K Designs Connect glue to lift each one of these sequins and glue it down to my card front. This is the adhesive that I like to use. I find that it uh, tra these travel through the mail really well and they don't come off in the mail. Another great tip for you, when you're mailing cards that have sequins, just go ahead and slide in another piece of plain cardstock um, just over the front of the card. That makes it a smooth surface and then your sequins don't tear your envelopes. The last thing I did was I took a white gel pen and I just filled in some of those gaps on my embossing. I didn't have a really, really good impression with my ink and so some of those areas had gaps. So I just used a white gel pen to fill in those areas. And that's my card for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. All of the supplies I used today are available at simonsystamp.com.